And now let's go to LG, which we may not be doing on the show now for a very, very long time. In fact, maybe not at all because LG is now getting out of the smartphone business. You know, it's actually very sad. Like I said, right at the beginning, I predicted it. I knew this was coming. Too many mistakes, too much money being lost in the smartphone division. At one time, LG was right there at the top. I mean, people used to talk about LG and Samsung phones almost in the same breath. They competed in all levels. They had flagships, they had budget, they had all kind of phones. Then they had a series of missteps and everything just went downhill from there and they never recovered. Too many losses in the smartphone category. So they're about to go and let's just show you some things that they did right which we'll really miss and some things that they got dramatically wrong. It's a sad time for the tech world. As LG announced recently, that it will exit the smartphone market amid falling market share and losses to its mobile division. However, it hasn't always been this gloomy for the South Korean tech giant, which has launched some impressive devices in the past. While LG did have a few misses, there were a lot of positives in how the company went about its business too. So here are some of LG's greatest hits and some forgettable misses. Back when the Nexus lineup by Google was in its full swing, LG was a huge part of it. The South Korean giant was still at the top of its game in the smartphone market and Google employed LG services to launch multiple Nexus devices. LG launched the Nexus 4 in 2012 and the Nexus 5 in 2013. Both phones lacked a good camera and didn't really have great battery life, but the affordable price tag and the regular software updates meant that LG was riding the smartphone wave with Google. LG has been a serial offender with marketing its devices. It hasn't been able to build a credible lineup of devices with no real consistency across its V series or the G series. Moreover, when Chinese brands like Xiaomi, Oppo and Vivo entered the Indian market, LG seemed to have lost the plot as it couldn't cope up with the new influx of devices. LG launched fewer smartphones, whereas the Chinese brands launched a new smartphone almost every day. While LG focused on bringing innovation to its lineup, it failed to capitalize on the increasing demand for value devices, which the likes of Oppo, Xiaomi and Vivo perfectly captured. LG's G-Series was its choice of weapon against the likes of Samsung, where LG tried to give buyers a slew of new features. The G2 cut down on bezels on the front of the device. The G3 and G4 were smartphones that offered great features without a lot of compromises. The G series also introduced the G Flex, a smartphone which had a curved back. LG put in a lot of thinking into how the phone feels in the hand of the user and introduced the new design. While LG not only kept the headphone jack at a time when every other company was moving away from it, it also kept high quality audio a mainstream feature on its devices. The LG G5 was an incredibly hyped modular phone. LG had set its sights on the future and introduced modules that a user could buy separately and enhance performance of the phone. There was a camera module that gave a boost to the smartphone camera. LG also made a module for improving sound quality with a DAC Hi-Fi audio accessory. But the modular phone never caught on with either buyers or other smartphone manufacturers and was arguably LG's biggest miss. Next year's sequel, the LG G6 was a regular smartphone and the world bid farewell to modules and modular smartphones. LG could never really find its wings in the smartphone market after the G5 fiasco, but the Explorer project was poised to provide a solution for that. And here comes the LG Wing. A flashy new design, a unique take on the foldable smartphone trend that seemed to gain pace in the market. The Wing ideally was the perfect device to leapfrog LG's standing in the market as a unique smartphone company. The Wing was loved by smartphone enthusiasts and was just a great smartphone overall. In recent years, all of LG's phone launches in India had an eerie similarity between them. The devices either had some gimmicky feature or it was like every other smartphone on the market, but LG never priced it correctly in the country. Take the LG Velvet for example. 
The phone was launched in 2020, but it shipped with a Snapdragon 845 chip from 2017. Despite the obvious lack of power, LG priced this phone at Rs 49,990, making it an almost impossible phone to recommend. The Velvet was a great looking phone, but its hefty price tag and the compromise on power in 2020 meant that sales were far and few in between.